I guess. Well, which one are you using? Is this on? Yeah. Well, he said he was going to mic you up, didn't no, he? No, he, he didn't. He didn't. I can't see that. Is that it, on? I can't really see it either. Uh, it looks on. I'm going to go ask him. No, but he needs this for One, Tess, can you hear me? Not very well. Let's go ahead and get started. Test, one, two, can you hear me? There we go. I think we are hot and ready uh, on the mic. And uh, so uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, and welcome back. We're glad to uh, see everybody back together as we start a new uh, academic year. It's exciting times uh, to be here on this campus. And so uh, before I get started, I'd like our leadership team to just stand up, uh, make sure I know that you know Amy uh, Ishmael and uh, uh, many of you all do, Vice President for Student Affairs, Dr. Dustin Grover, uh, Vice President for Academic Affairs, our Vice President for Finance, uh, Fiscal Affairs, Micah Mundell, and our Executive Director for the NEO Foundation, David Owen. And so I just want to, I know that we have some new people uh, on uh, here today and wanted to make sure that you knew who NEO administration is. And so thank you uh, folks for the, your service and leadership. Yeah, you can clap, absolutely. It's a big crowd, and uh, quite frankly, there's some people that are actually in their offices actually still serving students, and so we are live streaming this. Uh, we appreciate those uh, the staff that are back in their offices uh, serving students as we try to uh, enroll more students uh, for the upcoming uh, year, and so we're glad that uh, they are helping uh, our students. You know, the last couple of years, uh, Jordan Adams and I were just talking, the last couple of years, we've dealt with the thing they called COVID, uh, uh, global pandemic. And uh, I'm really excited about this upcoming year because we are really dealing with minimal uh, impact uh, of the COVID and the global global impact it's had here on this campus, but I'm ready to look forward. And I think that uh, we've, we've talked about the NEO experience. This is the our opportunity this year to really deliver uh, what the NEO experience is. We've had our challenges, of course, and we've not uh, have uh, been able to navigate those uh, troubling uh, times without your support without the work that you do. And we've done the best that we could during the challenging times. Has it been challenging? Absolutely, yes. But we are better because of your service to this institution and more, most importantly, our students. So I say thank you to the commitment to, that you make each and every day to our students. Uh, again, I believe that we are in a much better place. Thank you for your hard work. As we start another year, I'd like to remind us who we are, who NEO is. We're an open access institution that provide opportunities to students that want to further their higher education endeavors. We serve 85% uh, of our students receive uh, financial aid of some sort, more than. More than 50% of our students call themselves first generation or the first in their families uh, to go to college. We have to take that in consideration as we think about uh, uh, who we serve. You are, we are, their support group in many, many ways. They don't have the person at home that understands how to navigate higher education. They have no idea what questions to ask. And so it's important for us as 
community college personnel to really understand who we serve as, as students uh, here. And so we're handing that baton off to the next department, even though you may or may not be able to answer that question. We don't want to put them on a pathway or put them on a route to get there. We want to hand it off because our students can get lost in that transition. And again, we need to remember who we are. We need to continue to show them the way, help them, be, uh, help them, help guide them as they begin uh, their journey here at NEO this fall. And I will also remind you that students have chosen us. They've chosen NEO to be here. They want the NEO experience. We've built this college based on striving to be the premier two-year residential campus. We provide a university experience. We just happen to give out two-year degrees versus four-year degrees. That's what they choose NEO for. We have 800 students that are beyond the Tri-County area, meaning they have made NEO their destination. They have chosen to be here. So we've got to live up to that expectation as we continue to move forward. What junior college, community college in the state of Oklahoma or the region can say more than 30 states, more than 10 countries are represented on a rural community college campus? NEO can, we can. And so we need to take great pride in that. I had a chance, Elizabeth, the other day to introduce at least to five or six uh, Brazilians uh, here. Again, where does that happen on a typical community college in rural Oklahoma? It happens at NEO. And so I believe we are the institution of choice for these students, and we've got to live up to that expectation. They are truly the reason that I'm here, that I believe all of us are here for, and they, quite frankly, are my why. I want to help students succeed. I want to help them get to where they want to be. That may be a destination. We may be a destination for them to enter the workforce. It may be a destination for them to be here to help them catapult them to another uh, institution to go get their bachelor's degrees. And so we are a place of choice and we've got to make sure that we deliver this fall. As I think about uh, uh, what, uh, where we have been, uh, I think we need to uh, celebrate a few successes and, and talk about some updates that have happened uh, this past year. We've uh, been fortunate to receive external funding uh, to help us in a lots of different ways that uh, we didn't think that we'd be able to do the past couple of years. If you go back to a year ago, uh, I believe maybe even a year and a half ago, we provided uh, faculty with new laptops. That happened because of an external donation. This past year, we updated our PCs for our staff. That happened because we had external funding to help uh, uh, make that happen. Uh, and I'll say it's the Cherokee Nation that stepped up to the plate to help us do that. And we're very appreciative of all that they have done uh, for us and continue to do for us. From a fundraising standpoint, uh, we, uh, uh, we haven't celebrated it yet, but we're waiting on the family to celebrate a $100,000 scholarship endowment, the Wynn Ingersoll uh, Scholarship to help support uh, agriculture. Uh, this past weekend, I saw tons of our Ag Department uh, uh, staff and faculty and students uh, working the Ottawa County Fair, and we're pleased to say that we've got a $20,000 scholarship in Dr. Wiley Huff's name uh, to help support NEO students. Uh, as I look forward uh, to, uh, to, or look uh, to the back, to the past, uh, we also received uh, $300,000 in ARPA funds that we're supposed to be getting any day to support our nursing program, to help with sim, uh, sim, nursing sim labs. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that we received a $100,000 donation yesterday in support of our nursing sims. And we're committed to continue to raise money because we are the healthcare provider for Northeastern Oklahoma, and we've got to make sure that we continue to provide the best healthcare workers in this region. And so we are still seeking about $600,000, uh, but we're making progress and uh, our students in our program are deserving of that. And then also talked about the Cherokee uh, Nation. They've also helped support us with, uh, to help us address uh, new mattresses. Uh, we've uh, basically replaced half of the mattresses in our dormitories uh, this, this fall. And, uh, and also we're gonna have some furniture that's uh, being replaced as well. And we also have scholarships uh, funding that's a part of that. And so we're very appreciative of that. Um, and of course, we've got to continue to make improvements uh, on this campus. Uh, our deferred maintenance uh, is a huge struggle on this campus. And uh, when you have 110, 115 degree uh, days, 
uh, our, our weaknesses are exposed greatly uh, this past summer, uh, the past couple of weeks. And so I know the physical plant team has worked a lot of uh, overtime to help us uh, get those up and running. And we still have some critical things that we want to continue. But supply chain is an issue that we're all dealing with in all aspects and in particularly in our HVAC systems. And so we know that there's uh, much more work to do. I'll talk about physical plant stuff in here in just a little bit, but our residential halls, uh, we know that uh, we've got to have, find some small wins. I received a text message this past weekend and said, it's the small things. And uh, the comment was to me was new mattresses, outstanding new washer and dryers in all of our residential halls, because that's one of the complaints that I've heard for the last couple of years. And so we were able to make that happen over, over the summer semester and looking forward to that. Uh, we signed a Pepsi contract uh, on campus. And so you'll see a switch uh, and you'll see uh, vending machines that have card readers because we've been missing out on revenue all these years because we didn't have card readers on our vending machines. Little things, but help us uh, do uh, make some progress. On a, on a larger scale, our HVAC systems, uh, you know, again, I talked about supply chain. It's, uh, it's a, uh, uh, I think I went too far on enrollment. Uh, and so on supply chain, uh, we're having some issues. So we're not far along as where we wanted to be as it relates to our HVAC systems on campus. But Russell uh, and Van Halls, we've completed the interior work there. Now we're waiting on our cooling towers to get in at some point this fall. We did not make it into Dobson and Harrell, uh, but of course that's still a part, of, a part of our plan. And again, I'll say that this project again is made possible because of our COVID CARES funding uh, in addition to some of our reserves. And then it's a $4 million investment uh, to uh, our, our living quarters. You know, we think about the time that students spend in your classrooms, that's their home. Uh, we've got to invest to provide a better quality. And the first thing that we've got to do is invest in the HVAC to make sure that there's good quality airflow uh, there. Library administration building, if you didn't rec if you weren't, uh, if you missed out for about three weeks, they were in and out. Uh, and so we're uh, pleased that, uh, to say that the, the library administration has a new roof and hopefully we won't be seeing uh, uh, piles of water come through on the second floor. And so it's these, these small wins that we have to reinvest. And of course, we've got to do that uh, out of our cash and uh, we can't go into debt service. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, further. Another exciting time uh, or, or for me is we purchased a bus this summer. And uh, that's something that we've uh, struggled with. We have concerns about transportation and safety of our student athletes that go up and down the road. And so uh, that is on board. Uh, we've ordered two vans that are hooked up into supply chain issues, and we hope to see those this fall. And we're committed to updating our fleet uh, this upcoming year as well, uh, because it's critical needs that we're in a position that we're able to do so. And so I, I share positive things to say that we're making progress. It's been a tough, difficult couple of years, but these are one-time expenditures that we need to reinvest to help uh, help our campus. As I think about uh, partnerships, you heard me talk about it last year. We talked about a partnership with Northeast Career Tech uh, that has come to a reality, to, to fruition. Uh, this fall, we've actually hired our nursing person to uh, uh, manage the Kansas campus. So that's Kansas, Oklahoma, to be clear, not Kansas, Kansas. Little Kansas, as locals like to say. We'll be uh, hosting our 12-month fast track program uh, on the Career Tech campus there in Little Kansas. And we're pleased that that partnership is 100% funded by our Career Tech partners. We've got to continue to be innovative uh, to, to figure out these partnerships that come with dollars to help us expand our nursing footprint in, a, in an area that there's uh, uh, 16,000 LPNs across the state of Oklahoma right now that are eligible to come into uh, a, a fast track program. And we believe that we can do that. And so there'll be 10 seats there this fall. Uh, or excuse me, this spring, we start January of 23. We'll be accepting applications this fall, and then we'll be expanding that to 20 seats in, the, in, in, 20, in January of 24. As I think about accreditation, uh, we had our, our, our visit uh, last year. We received a report back this past fall. Uh, we had uh, two blemishes uh, that, uh, that we've been working uh, to, to address. Uh, one was our faculty credentials, and that really was a policy deal. And then if, uh, some of our courses that we had to make sure that our faculty credentials were appropriate. Dr. Grover has uh, taken a good charge. We feel great about where we are on faculty credentials, and we'll be submitting a report this fall and uh, feel very good about that. The other uh, aspect is where you all have had many of conversations on the faculty side about assessment. 
assessment is real. And that is, uh, there's been lots of trainings throughout the, the year, uh, this past year. And we know that uh, we are, we feel good at this point, but if, uh, we have to be mindful as we continue to do work going forward in preparation as it relates to our assessment across campus. We will have a site visit uh, next fall in September uh, of 23. And so all of this is in preparation uh, for that. Speaking of accreditations, we had a great site visit for our nursing program. And uh, ASIN is the acronym, Amer Accreditation Council for Ed Nursing Education, I believe is the acronym. Uh, they came in and did a report. Uh, we are still waiting for the final uh, uh, publication of that, but I can tell you we feel great about it and expect to get the formal approval this fall. Uh, their team did a great job. This fall, um, Dr. Don Smathers and Clay Bridges will be in, embarking on a site visit for our PTA. And so, of course, that's taking time and is important work as, the, as we work on these specialty accreditations that are important parts of the workforce programs that we provide uh, here locally. As we think about enrollment uh, this past year, let's looking back, not necessarily talking about fall, uh, we were down about two and a half percent this past year. Uh, compared to where we were a year ago. Uh, and and I'll, I'll say that the year prior, we were down 3.7%. I say that to say accumulation of north of 5%, but we have fared well uh, during this pandemic. That's not a trend that's happened uh, across the state of Oklahoma. I've been on the phone with presidents the last couple of days just trying to check in where uh, institutions are. And, um, um, you know, we, we've navigated pretty well looking backwards, looking forward uh, for the fall semester. I've heard anywhere from 13, 15 percent down, 7, 9 percent down. I've heard some flat and very few ups uh, as it relates to enrollment for the upcoming year. And as of this morning, uh, NEO is down 3.7 percent. That's why it's important that we still have staff back in their offices uh, working to support those students that are here, uh, uh, that are here trying to get um, uh, taken care of. As you break down those numbers, uh, you know, what's uh, very positive about it is our new freshman number is slightly up. And uh, I can tell you that is not necessarily a trend. And so appreciate the hard work uh, that has been done by everybody. But I'll also take this time to say we are all recruiters and retention officers in everything that we do because enrollment is a uh, uh, part of our financial stability going forward. And so appreciate the work that's been done there. One of the things that we've seen in our enrollment for the fall semester is being down on concurrent enrollment. And so we're still trying to gather what that is because our applications for concurrent enrollment are up substantially, but our enrollment's down substantially. And so on concurrent, we believe that this may be the first sign of the impact of COVID on the, on the classroom as it relates to public schools. And so uh, we're going to continue to uh, uh, work that out. And so enrollment is important. When I think about, uh, here's the snapshot, if you will, of where we've been over the last uh, four to five years, six years, I guess there, seven uh, years. Uh, that kind of gives you a snapshot. We achieved 41,000 credit, 41,800 credit hours this past year. You can kind of see that comparison. So we've stabilized a little bit, but of course we want to go up uh, as, 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 it, as it relates to enrollment. If you look at the uh, first column to where we are today and you use today's tuition and fee revenue on credit hour production, so go to 2015 and 16, our tuition and fee revenue would be close to 1.4, 1.5 million dollars more than where we were. Well, a lot of headaches go away uh, when you have uh, 1.4 uh, million dollars. Um, one of the things I think, again, is where we are, we have to be cognizant of our marketplace. Again, we talked about first generation uh, income restricted students. Uh, for the third year in a row, we're holding tuition and fees flat. And, uh, and you'll get it, we'll get into a slide here in just a little bit as it relates to state appropriations. But it's important that we continue to understand who we serve in our marketplace. We can't price ourselves out of the market. Students have choices. And so we've got to live up to the NEO experience, provide that experience, and price point uh, becomes a part of that as well. And so here's a chart that David Fisher provides me on an annual basis. And so what does this mean? So the dark blue going from left to right going up is the total cost of attendance over the time frame from 2010 to 2011. And the brown, uh, orange, I'm maybe colorblind, uh, is this one right here. 
is the percentage, uh, or, or it is the maximum Pell that a student can receive. And so the other, the light blue line is the percentage, use this side over here, is the percentage of maximum Pell covers. So if you go back to the first side of the slide, 86% of the overall cost attendance was paid by maximum Pell. We dropped down to 59% just a couple of years ago, and we are back up to about 65%. So this is important as we continue to think about our pricing uh, going forward. State appropriations. Here's why we are able to uh, say, keep tuition and fees flat. State appropriations, the legislature was very helpful this year. They could have been more generous. We're always looking for more, but it's better than a poke in the eye. Uh, we got 2% uh, as it relates to our base. And so we're very uh, fortunate about that. Tell our local legislators that we appreciate them and their support because the 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 perception of higher ed has changed in a positive way the last couple of years, which was not where we were just a few years ago. And so you can see our increase of approximately 2% to our state appropriations. Section 13 offset is uh, our deferred maintenance budget. Just a couple of years ago, that was only $740,000. Now we're up to a million dollars. And so there's been a commitment by Kevin Wallace, the chair of the Appropriations and Budget Committee to help us continue to do that. Roger Thompson on the state Senate side, the chair of Appropriations and Budget, they get higher education. They are advocating for us tirelessly and we appreciate their support. Next is the critical workforce. STEM initiative. Uh, we received uh, this uh, supplemental uh, boost to our uh, uh, base. It's not necessarily our base, but uh, from the state this year, and that's to help us continue to grow STEM related fields, including nursing. And so as we look to the future, we've got to continue to figure out, uh, nursing is one of our most expensive uh, programs uh, on campus. It's no secret, but we it is a community program that we serve. And so we've got to make sure that we have all the butts uh, in the seats that we can in that program as it relates to trying to grow our STEM related. And so you'll see this next year as we invest in the ways to recruit and retain STEM related folks uh, for this type of funding. And then lastly, uh, we received 100% reimbursement this past year uh, for our concurrent enrollment. And so that $70,000 was not something that we had received in previous years. And so again, these may not be large steps, but they are small steps to our state legislature is so, so supporting us. So here's a snapshot. Uh, I know uh, Chip Hammonds has been uh, keeping these for 50 years now. No, no, you hadn't been here that long. But but uh, he is. Uh, uh, here, here's a snapshot of our budget in comparison to where we were just uh, you know the three year snapshot. And so I can tell you, 2021, uh, 15 million dollars on E and G. Uh, the bottom side is auxiliary, uh, roughly $24 million. Last year in 21, 22, there was about $9 million in CARES Act or ARPA funds or HERF funding or whatever the new acronym is there. This year, $28 million in total, $3 million is a part of our CARES Act, ARPA, uh, HERF funding. And so you can see the breakdown, uh, uh, if you will. ENG is uh, uh, basically our academic enterprise auxiliary is a housing bookstore uh, revenue to help uh, offset our extracurricular co-curricular activities. If you take a look at our snapshot of what's the percentage of uh, support from state appropriations, we did have an uptick of 54% by state appropriations. What uh, this slide doesn't show you is state appropriations only equate to 29% of our overall operations uh, going back to that previous slide. So 28 million, we'll, we'll take, we'll call it 25 million when you take out CARES Act. So only 29% uh, of our overall operations are funded through state appropriations. So again, being mindful of who we serve, the only increase that we had in uh, cost this year was our board. Um, and so you can see those slide increases there at the bottom. Uh, we have adjusted uh, the flex uh, uh, programs there uh, to to try to minimize uh, the impact on our students. And so we're, we're, we're glad that uh, we kept those to a minimum uh, as best as we could. And of course, those uh, also reflect over into increased costs as it relates to revenue and then also an expenditure on the auxiliary side of things. Cash reserves. Again, it's been tough. We have some resources to go spend uh, on strategic priorities. 
and we'll talk about some of the strategic priorities here in a little bit. So we're in a much better place uh, on our, our, our cash reserves. Uh, and you can see the breakdown there. And of course, uh, those will go away uh, if we spend them. And so we've got to we've got to be thinking about reoccurring revenue, reoccurring expenses related to our cash reserves. And I'll say on the cash reserves and even on the debt service component, um, our, our CFI composite financial index score was 0.9 when I started here, the worst in the state of Oklahoma. And we are at 3.0, which means we are in the hunt to be in the middle. We're in the middle of the pack. We are in a good position. And it's been uh, thanks to your sacrifices, your extra work to help us get to this point. And now we've got to continue to look forward uh, as it relates to our, our plan going forward. Um, and so that kind of gets into going forward. Vision 2027, you have this packet uh, there in front of you. I don't intend to go through details with you all, but I want to give you a snapshot. So first of all, if you participated in the strategic planning committee or you participated in a subcommittee, please stand up. Let's thank them for their work. Appreciate you all. This was a long process this past year, but we needed input uh, from not only you, uh, faculty and staff, but also community and alumni, students, to make sure we know where we want to go. Uh, Vision 27 is a five-year plan of where we want to go, how we invest in our strategic priorities that have been identified. And so through SWOT analysis, through surveys, to some focus groups, we gathered uh, uh, input uh, from lots of folks in order to help us identify that. Uh, the strategic priorities are listed there on the screen. You can see academic and student success, campus safety and facilities. We also I did, of course, enrollment management, retention and recruitment, personnel support and development, and resource development. So I want to go through these strategic, strategic priorities, but I wanted you to have the full details because this document is the guide. It is the footprint, it's the roadmap as we look to 27. We have not changed. Our vision statement and our mission sta statement have not changed. We want to continue to be the national leader in rural residential community college education. That's who we are. That is the NEO experience. And so with that premise, we get into our, our, our strategic priorities. In our first strategic priority, academic student success, we've all heard the saying, uh, it's less expensive to retain a student than it is to recruit a student. Well, I, I wanna shift uh, you know, that commentary just a little bit to say, historically, we've talked about student preparedness. Well, really what we wanna talk about is that we wanna do everything that we can to be a student ready campus. Student ready we know that we're gonna have challenges as it relates to the input. And so we've got to make sure that we have student success services and our people are prepared to understand how we handle first generation income restricted navigate here on campus. It's our approach. We wanna, uh, again, focus on less, on less on preparedness and focus on how we support student success through, uh, through this uh, strategic priority. Uh, we've got to ask our questions. How do we become better mentors or better coaches? They are first generation. And so how do we support uh, these students? You can see the goals there on the screen. Uh, obviously online uh, students. Uh, and how do we support uh, them in that, uh, in that uh, format? Campus safety and facilities. All of these have uh, a mission, a purpose, goals, outcomes, action plans, I encourage you to read through this. REC, Executive Cabinet, this is the guide for us going forward as we invest in NEO. So campus safety for me is uh, one of the top priorities. That's one of the things that I uh, lose sleep on uh, is campus safety. And so uh, our, our Director of Public Safety, Chief of Police, Buddy Lambert, has prepared some active shooter training videos that we're going to be communicating out to you all through Canvas uh, this week. Uh, and then, of course, this fall, October 5th and 6th, we will actually do some on-site training as well. And so we're taking a proactive approach. Again, this is a part of how we believe where we are in society. Uh, as it relates to campus safety. And so those details will all be shared with you all in an email. 
In regards to facilities, uh, we know that they need improvements. It's why we're investing the resources necessary to improve the air quality in our residential halls. And more than 600 students call NEO their home. And when I say home, they live here. And so we've got to make that and continue that investment of the work that's already commenced. But we also know that we have to make investments in our other facilities across campus. And so we've got to do so strategically. And so what part of our deal is a part of the thing that we will do is uh, embark on a space utilization classroom study to figure out how do we best do uh, use our existing space. Uh, we have spaces that remain uh, vacant throughout the day or for large portions of the day. And so if we're going to make some investments as it relates to improving that space, we've got to know how to do so uh, strategically. Obviously, this one, if you look, has a lot more uh, goals than everything else because enrollment is uh, vital to everything that we do. It's the key to our financial stability going forward. When enrollment's up, uh, we have conversations uh, about pay. When enrollment's up, we're able to invest in things that we wouldn't uh, be able to otherwise. Everyone here is a recruiter and everybody here is a retention officer. Enrollment from the Tri-County area, when I say Tri-County, we're talking about Delaware, Craig and Ottawa, has continued to decline. Uh, we can't rely on these three counties to be the population center for NEO. Uh, our activity-based programs allow us, enable us to reach across the state. We've got to look into secondary markets so that we can continue to find students to attract them to our campus. Again, I think uh, once we get them on campus, we have a great opportunity to show them the great things that we have. As part of this, communications are key to recruiting and retaining students. We've embarked on a CRM. Uh, Chase has done an outstanding job. We, uh, we did through a purchasing power through the A&M system. I'm pleased to say that we are leading the way as it relates to implementing our CRM customer relationship management software program and will be vital to how we continue to communicate and relate with this generation of technology aid students. But more importantly, it's able to, to uh, attract or capture um, uh, data so that we can figure out what type of communications are resonating with our students. And when people think about NEO and they're from far off, what's the first thing that, the, so they've met with a recruiter, they've met with a faculty member out on the road and you've just pumped up NEO and the first thing that they do after, they, after you leave, well, they may throw away our materials, but uh, the next thing that they do is they're truly interested in us. What do they go do to find out more about us? Go to the website. So, do you think that resonates to a 17 and 18 year old? We've had some hiccups along the way. We've had personnel changes uh, in PR. We've had some issues as it relates to our vendor. This is a step in progress. We are uh, just a week or so away from being able to launch this internally because we want you to have your hands on it to help you understand it because the navigation is different from what, we've used, what we're accustomed to. And so uh, uh, the, the marketing and PR team is working with our departments across campus to make sure content is ready. They'll continue to do that in the next couple of weeks. And we plan to launch the new NEO website in September this year, uh, guarantee. And so I'm very excited about uh, this new look because we are missing uh, the bang for our buck on our current website. And I appreciate the work and appreciate your patience but as we work the next couple of weeks, just know uh, your responsiveness helps us, enables us to, to get that out much quicker. Another uh, top, pro one of the major uh, goals uh, that came out of this is how do we uh, do support our personnel? And so this is a, an important initiative as well. We cannot achieve, uh, um, we cannot uh, uh, look beyond our people. You are NEO. We've got to continue to be innovative uh, and creative of how we can do this. There's many action items that can take place uh, and how we support you all. Again, going back to who we serve, how do we provide training and professional development to you to help better serve the students and become better employees? And how do we invest in you? How do we increase the uh, compensation package uh, for this institution? Enrollment is key, but there's ways that we can and will invest in our people one of the uh, top priorities in the action plan uh, for, for this area was to provide more administrative days. I have informally done that the last couple of years. I'm here today to say Wednesday uh, before Thanksgiving, NEO will be closed 
and we will be taking off December 22nd, and those will become a part of our employee package going forward. I thank you for the work that you do. We've got a whole lot of work to do, but we're taking a step in the right direction uh, today. As, a, as we move into the last uh, uh, bullet point, uh, resource development, uh, we cannot uh, accomplish everything that we need to do relying on tuition uh, and fees and or just state appropriations. So we've got to be, we've been great at grants uh, on this campus. We've got to continue to be grant, uh, great at grants, finding external resources to help push NEO forward. Uh, we talked a lot about a lot of improvements that have happened on this campus because of external funding. That is our pathway forward. And so in addition to foundations and corporations and relationships with port and people in Northeastern Oklahoma, we have great alumni that have gone on to do great things on this camp uh, from this campus, uh, tons of them. We've got to be intentional about reconnecting with them. We've got to tell their story. Uh, but more importantly, we've got to build relationships, intentional relationships, because uh, I, I sent a message to a, a CEO this morning in Midland, Odessa, Texas, who uh, is a CEO of a large firm and said, here's our football schedule. I'm looking forward to hosting you on campus. We have those alumni across the globe that need to be back on campus. I challenge you to send me or David or anybody some of the, the alumni that we ought to be connected to that we aren't. And the assumption that I want you to take is we don't know who they are. And we've got to think beyond Miami, Ottawa, Northeastern Oklahoma, as we continue to focus on uh, resource. And so part of that is digital communications to re-engage our alumni. And so again, the details are in your packet. It's Vision 2027 is exciting. It is our pathway forward. And uh, this is uh, what, how we will continue to measure uh, what we do. How do we invest uh, in, in our future? And as I said uh, last year about this time, uh, I think I put opportunity is now here. If you'll remember my comments from last year, you, uh, opportunity is truly now here. I truly believe that we will provide, we will help students achieve their dreams and their goals right here. You are doing that each and every day. And I applaud you for that. I can't wait for students to get back on campus. Uh, I can't wait for Saturday with move-in day. Uh, you may see me sweating a little bit to help try to carry things on. I'm excited about the upcoming year. Uh, you all are a big part of our success going forward. I look forward to having lots of conversations uh, with you. Uh, as we continue to move uh, NEO forward. Our students look for the NEO experience. We are the two-year residential, premier residential campus. It takes everybody rowing together, row North row. Have a great year, folks. Thank you. So with that being said, I think Sodexo said about 11.15, so we may be just a few minutes uh, ahead of time, but uh, thank you all very much for the work that you do, and uh, looking forward to a great year.